What's going on everyone? Justin again. As always, thanks for watching my channel. Welcome back. Got the Rito from What's the happening? and the Looch, but what are no Looch today? No, Looch is stuck up in the mountains with the snow. <laughs> but hey, look, go ahead and subscribe to the channel if you're not already subscribed by tapping the little beer mug down there in the bottom right hand corner. We'd appreciate it. And hit that notification bell so you can be notified when I post my next Mechanic Insight video or tour review video. Furthermore, head on over to Dorito's channel. You can do so by going down in the description where I'll put the channel link to his channel where he's got some pretty cool stuff between the Tao Tao stuff you do with the builds and then he's got some off-roading adventures. And, and a whole bunch stuff. of comedy. Whole bunch of comedy. <laughs> I'll tell you, that Luch, he's a funny guy, man. Yeah. If you haven't checked him out, check him out. Make sure to subscribe and do the same thing. Hit the bell for him as well. Now you can be notified when they go on their next race. You got another race coming up here pretty soon? In a couple weeks, we're actually going to be coming out your way out here in Joshua Tree and racing with a couple other people and doing some desert stuff. Cool. So. Look forward to that. Yep. It's also KOH time, so kind of right around mid-month is usually when they start kicking off KOH. Don't know that they're actually going to have a full bore KOH this year. I haven't heard any word on that. But oh, no. where, wherever there's dirt and rocks, people are going to crawl, right? They're yeah. like, I got six feet between me and the other guy with just the Jeeps alone. Yeah, and that's the whole thing is the one thing about doing outdoor stuff is, you know, I got my mask here and we're going to... I'm going to be wearing it as he's going through things and everything, but we got our distance and we're keeping our distance. But out there riding, you're wearing a helmet, you're riding. Get out there, enjoy it with your family. Have Definitely. some fun. Definitely, because you ain't going to be able to go watch a movie. Get in the dirt, go play. Outdoor activities. Yep. Time to take it back a notch, right? People just don't go outdoors as much as they used to. Everyone's stuck glued to the tube. You're glued to the tube right now. But we appreciate you being glued to the tube because today we're going to be doing a little bit of diagnostic work. Look, uh, you guys know I'm getting ready to step on into the platform as far as side B of the automotive trade is concerned, which is diagnosing vehicles. Dorito has a misfire. We're going to plug in the Zeus. We're going to check it out, see which cylinder is misfiring. He kind of already knows, but I'm going to walk you through the paces of what it is that I would typically do to kind of go after a misfire. We're going to figure out what cylinder we might even do a scope test just to scope the coil to see if the coil itself is shot. If it's not, or if it still seems like there's something weird outside of it, we'll probably go through, check out the plug, which we do have the Triton special tool, because this is a Triton V10. And if those plugs break, we want to make sure that he's just not stuck, right? So we're going to extract it and go from there. You always want to prep that by spraying a little bit of PD Blaster, which I got in the truck, down into the chamber just to kind of free it up a little bit. We're going to lightly tighten, then we're going to lightly loosen, kind of work it back and forth so we don't break the porcelain. But if it happens, we got the special tool for it. This special tool for any Ford Triton V8 or V10 will be down in the description. Check out that Amazon affiliate link. That being said, I'm going to get some stuff together. We're going to plug on in here and check it out. Yeah, And, and this is my workhorse, so it's got to be running perfect. It's got to be running on all 10. Trust Justin to go over it. He's going to go over things with you guys too and break it down. So, this is all him. If things get too gnarly, we have a compression tester and a cylinder leak down tester. Hopefully, it's just a plug and coil. Yeah. So, That's we got those parts just in case too. Though. Just in case. And here's another thing this is a Ford product. You want to use Motocraft. You don't want to use Duralast. You don't want to use any Neridium or NGKs or anything like that. The reason is because it's still going to have misfire problems. You could have replaced it with brand new plugs and a Duralast coil. You're still going to have the issue. It's notorious. Ford needs its Motocraft. Don't know why that is. It's just the way Ford is so we can thank everyone over at the manufacturing plant of Ford for that. Yeah, you, you did stress that. And I want to thank, I went over to Ford and I got that. They gave me a good price on everything. But it was it was substantially more uh, for comparing the Duralast to the Motocraft. But going over to the dealership, they were real awesome. They worked with me. We actually bought our Explorer from them as well. So they gave us a real good price, and they got a couple little die-cast cars from them, too. Oh, dude, love so. those things. <laughs> All right, let's roll this baby. I'm going to yeah. get a sweatshirt off. It's getting warm. That's good, though. I like it hot. All right, all right. So this is a 2016 Ford E350 box van. Super duty. Super duty. Triton B10. First things first, we want to make sure to turn off any kind of auxiliary stuff so we're not draining the battery. Power on the scan tool. 
and I'll let it connect. I'm gonna go through it and then I'm gonna show you guys up close what it is that I'm looking for. Yeah, right on. It's a cherry Pepsi. <laughs> Just in case you wanted to know. Uh, Had good to drop stuff. that in for you, sorry. Good stuff. <laughs> It's very important that I actually showed you guys that it was a Cherry Pepsi. We do not promote drinking and driving whatsoever on this channel, nor does Dorito, okay? Nope, the so, Cherry Pepsi. If you're driving, be smart, man. Be yeah, smart about it. Was, it. It was just a joke. Just a joke. <laughs> All right, so it doesn't exist. That means we got to do it manually. Is the key on? Yes, the key is on. Continue. This is a Ford... E series. All right, so you can see here we got a couple of misfire codes. So we have a P0300 random misfire. We have a P0304, and this is showing the cylinder number four has something going on. P0307 misfire detected. So also something in seven. Let's see here misfire bank one air fuel ratio imbalance. Okay, so that's something else to consider. Scroll up. Random misfires. Okay, so we got a couple things here. We got the air fuel ratio imbalance. This has some question marks. I'm more specifically focused on these two cylinders, but I am curious to see what Snap On has to say about this one. So let's click on diagnose. Switch the ignition off. Okay. Continue. okay what are they saying here replace oxygen sensor 62 replace cat 13 replace control see snap on what are you doing here replace control arm ball joint replace the battery replace the you guys are nuts man this is the one thing i am not a fan of when it comes to snap on if you have people telling you what they did for an air fuel ratio do not start replacing disc pads or your ball joints or your battery this is ridiculous but look all right so some o2 stuff possible cat stuff that could be because it's been misfiring so it's running lean or it's running rich we're going after the codes i'm going to change this over to scope mode we are going to back pin probe cylinder number four first then we'll go to cylinder seven let's see what the coil looks like on the scope all right so get you a cheat sheet okay cylinder layout we got one, two, three, four, five on the passenger side. We got six, seven, eight, nine, ten on the driver side. If you're working on an E350 or a Triton V10, this is how it's laid out. So we're going to go second coil from the back moving forward on this side, which is this wire right here, going to the coil. We're on our guided component test signature um, wire is what we're going after which is the green with the violet so that's going to be the one to the left if you're at the plug you also want to be on an engine ground which we're just going to clamp to the back of this bolt and we should be good with that so let me back pin probe our green with violet and i'm going to touch in on there and then i'm going to reconnect it I'm going to go into my meter. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to turn the ignition on and start it so we can see what it looks like while running. Were you wanting to do the brake pads and the ball joints, by the way? No, actually, can we do the piston return springs first? <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, I mean, if it's going to keep my engine synced, we should probably do the brakes. Right. That's what I was thinking, you know. Hey, if you're uh, driving along and hit the brake pedal and it's pulsating, that's a good indication of a misfire. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Don't forget the ball joint. That's going to keep them all firing oh, perfect. Because yeah. if it's shaking, I mean, that's got to, you know, cause some shaking, misfiring stuff, you know. <laughs> I mean, I'm no mechanic, but I'll tell you what. What does the tire have to do with ignition? I, I don't even know. All right, let's fire this bad boy up. Shall we? Do it. All right, so here is our signature test right now of cylinder number four. To be honest, I'm not 
It only does it on occasion. You see how it's dropping out? We're gonna go to a known good sonder. Hang on. Let me switch this around. And we're gonna go and back in probe the rear one now. Okay, I think from here, the best thing to do is really now to pull the coil for number four and take a look at the plug. And the reason why I say that is because on the scope, I really wasn't seeing any difference between a known possible bad to the known good. And I say that because you can see how it drops and then spikes and the spike kind of diminishes and goes away. You can see where there is no spike from time to time. So I suspect possibly a, a foul plug. So I think we need to remove that coil and pull the plug. So that's where we're going. All right, so now we're gonna get up in here. Should be a seven millimeter. I'm gonna unplug the coil. Just gonna shift our fuel injector over a little bit. And the plugs in the coil are right there next to you. Too. Yep, I appreciate that. Okay, got that cracked loose. It is a total rider's paradise out here though, I'll tell you that much. Oh yeah. It amazes me. Just hills for days, desert for days. Wouldn't have it any other way. Beautiful. Alright, so let's pull out our coil. Oh, okay. So here's something. I don't know if you guys can see this or not. But our, our coil has some oil on it. So that oil can most certainly cause a misfire. Reason would be is why, I'm gonna go to flashlight. Let me get up in here with this. Let's see if I can see what's going on in here. Well, it's not from the valve cover. Interesting. And get our spark plug socket. Let's get, get down in here and pull this plug out and see what we're working with. All right, so here's the be careful part of this, all right? Now there's already oil down in there, a lot of oil. I'm about to get a rag. Where's that coolant? That's coolant. Okay. Ew, he's so gross. It's coolant. It, it's got that. Yeah, man, that's, I thought that was oil. I think that's coolant. I really do. Obviously it still has an oily taste, but Okay, so here's the deal. It looks oily because there's some residual grease and dirt on the top of the engine that's getting down in there. But by sticking the spark plug socket, you can see how thin it is. So it raises some questions. Yeah, I tasted it because I'm just that kind of gross guy, right? And it tastes cooling. And judging by the intake manifold gaskets here, I could tell you that there probably is what's causing that. Having that much coolant down in that cylinder is most definitely what's causing it. So we might have different problems than we originally had suspected. Obviously, we were not getting a consistent pattern on either a known good coil or a known bad. And now I think I know the reason why. Because if coolant is getting down into each chamber of the coil, it's gonna cause all kinds of weird arcing and sparking stuff. But let's go ahead and just for S and G's, Pull one of these plugs. Well, at least the coil. Oh, hot. Right. Yeah, it's just saturated. Let's 
really not too wet down in the hole. Yeah, there's no water in your off. Well, that's a good sign. Yeah, that's another thing. If you suspect that even for a second that you might have a blown head gasket because you've been running with a leak, check your engine oil dipstick. Pull it out and see if it looks like it's overfilled past the regular mark. That could be an indication that you might have a blown uh, head gasket. Here, you want to take a look? Yeah, hang on a second. It does look a little nasty though. You're good. See the texture of it or no? Yeah, it's fine. That looks oily. Okay. All right. So the plugs themselves, they are worn. Okay, we can see that. We can judge that by the age of it. You can see the base of the porcelain. You can see it. It is a Motocraft plug, and it is obviously wet because coolant is leaking from the intake. So I think we figured out what's going on here with this misfire. It's not electrical. It is definitely mechanical. And meaning that the intake would have to come off. We would have to replace the intake manifold gaskets. Things that were, that you can expect from doing something like this. So it's a little bit time consuming to do that. I don't believe we're going to be able to get it done today. And with these Fords, like there's a plastic hose right in here. These plastic uh, vacuum lines that they have are notorious for breaking. So you want to make sure you do have some rubber line on hand should you have to repair that because they're just that they just become that brittle over time things like this this is going to be fine you got some quick disconnects on here and then you got your pcv that's not too bad either um we're definitely wanting to take care of him but this is going to be one of those kind of projects that's going to take a lot longer than i'm willing to actually film um but at this point this would be a repair that I'm not going to have time to film for you guys, but at least we got a chance to diagnose and figure out what was really going on. Yes, the spark plugs are worn. I do not suspect that the coil is bad. Uh, it's the fact that it's misfiring on both banks, opposite cylinders, you know, and then seeing the coolant the way that we did. Obviously, we, we now know what's really going on. All right, guys, so that was pretty much it in a nutshell. Look, it was kind of a down and dirty diagnostics, right? We didn't know what we were expecting, only that... There was some misfire issues. We looked into it a little bit. We did get a chance to plug the scope in. You did see a little bit of intermittent uh, erratic behavior as far as the signature test was concerned. Kind of led me kind of speculating possibly a foul plug of some kind. Obviously, coolant was getting down into the cylinder where the coil and the plug is, and that's going to cause that. So, unfortunately, there's not enough time in the day to do the full repair. Dorito might have to come back and I might have to just bust it out here on another weekend. Uh, so moving forward, I hope you guys enjoyed today's content. I'm going to let Dorito wrap it up with his final thoughts. But before he does, again, check the description, go to his channel, and subscribe for some really cool desert content. So let me tell you, people, here's my final thoughts. You spend a good chunk of money on a truck. You expect to have a nice truck. I'm going to go ahead and talk with who I bought the truck from see if something like that can be handled. But ultimately, Justin and I talked about it. There, there's, there's certain agreements when you make, when you buy something and maybe it won't come through. So more than likely, it's gonna go back to Justin. But when you put a little bit under 10,000 miles on a vehicle, you shouldn't have an issue like this. So maybe we'll take this part up on my channel and go from there. But otherwise that, as far as mechanically and everything like that, we'll either be going to Justin Dow or you might see a new truck. So, thanks I, for watching. I want to actually bring up a good point, and he will go into further discussion as far as his thoughts and uh, opinions about this. But let's 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 talk about this real briefly, if we can. Sure. What to expect when you're buying a used car? What is typically done, not just at the dealership level or fleet level, but how about just the used car lot in general? There is this misnomer. Uh, between customers and the actual lot themselves. You are buying a vehicle that's used that is as is. Now, when they undergo, when the mechanic or technician, whoever is checking it out, undergoes their inspection, there's very few things that they're actually checking, but it's mostly for safety purposes. They're checking the wiper blades. They're check, checking the functionality of your headlights, your signal lights, your turn signals, your hazards. They're hitting the horn, making sure that the seatbelts latch. They're checking the tire tread depth to make sure you have at least 50% or greater. Okay, it doesn't have to be 100%. It 
if there's 50% or more tread life, then those tires are going to stay on it. That goes the same exact thing with brake pads. If you have at least 40% or better of brake pads, that is as good as it gets. What is 40%? Four millimeter. Okay, once you get down to three, guess what? Every shop recommends that you do pads and rotors. So you really only have one millimeter of brake pad life before you have to do brakes. That could be a thousand miles later, that could be three thousand miles later, depends on your commute. If there's no significant huge leaks, if it's a small weep or a small drip that can be easily controlled that might buy them a couple oil changes, they're not going to go ahead and have you remove the oil pan to do the gasket. They're going to wipe it down, pressure wash it in most cases and put it on the lot. Okay, then three to six thousand miles later, that's you, that's on you. When it comes to checking the fluids, they're going to check the oil level, the trans level. They're going to smell the trans fluid, make sure it's not burnt. They're going to check the oil, make sure that the oil isn't above its mark or that it's not, you know, incredibly dirty. If it is, usually they're going to do an oil change with any used vehicle. That goes the same exact thing with your battery. It could be aged, but is, does it still have enough cold cranking amps? They're going to check that. If it does, they're not going to give you a new battery because it's two years old. They're going to look at the fluid, like the coolant, the brake fluid. They're going to see if those are at the sufficient level. If nothing's leaking, there's no reason to do pressure tests or anything like that. If there's no check engine light, they're usually not going to plug a scan tool in to let you know what the history was. So if a customer came in, cleared codes before they sold it to the lot, the lot went through it, no check engine light came back on because sometimes it takes so many trip cycles, they're going to sell it as is. Now if the check engine light comes on, let's say six people road test it, finally it comes back on, well, now they're going to take a look at it because they can't sell it with a check engine light on, right? That could be a safety thing. But if there was no check engine light, they're not going to go in and, and dig any deeper. It's unfortunate that the circumstances happen the way they happen for Mr. Dorito here. Exactly. But that is what you can expect when you're buying a used vehicle. Yep. Now, this is what I, wanted, I also want to clarify. Um, it, it, I'm not talking about getting into a big mishmash because they sold me a bunk vehicle. Like Justin just said. They went through the vehicle, it was A-OK. -okay. Now this is more of a thing of honoring their type of business. The vehicle has less than 10,000 miles on it. It's got an indication of, of an issue like this. It hasn't been mistreated or anything like that. It's still, to me, a new vehicle. And I've done several years of business with this company. Um, that's why I'm not even naming the name as well. So this is more of a thing of them honoring their them saying this is a perfectly running truck, this is a good truck, we recommend this truck. It's a matter of them honoring that. Now, if they don't, then of course, I gotta take care of what I take care of. And it's more of a, sorry about your luck, sucker, and I go about my way. But this is by no fault, their, by, by no indication whatsoever, that this is their fault and misrepresenting themselves. This is stuff that happens, and let's just see how honorable of a company they are. Rock and roll. Well, guys, thanks as always for watching the channel. If you like today's content, smash the thumbs up. You didn't, I don't know what to tell you. I guess smash a little thumbs down. I know it's an enjoyable feeling for some of you out there, so I guess <laughs> smack yeah. it away. All yeah, right. we talked about that one, didn't we? <laughs> share if you want to share. We'll see you next video. Dorito, thanks for coming out. A little thanks, fist bump. Brother. Fist bump. Got antiseptic in the pocket. This is. <laughs>